Chapter 3 A Shock Kamerod Sokak was a narrow, quiet street of old apartment buildings. Tom walked along the pavement, looking at the numbers on the doors. There was only one street light and it was difficult to see. But finally, he found Angela's address, number 11. The building had a large glass door. Tom pushed it, but it was locked. There was no bell. He knocked on the door. Nothing happened. He knocked again, louder this time, and listened. Silence. Damn, he thought. He was impatient now and worried. He stood back in the middle of the street and looked up. There were five floors and all the windows were black. There was no light anywhere in the building. Angela, he said to himself, Angela, where are you? A short distance away, the man in the grey raincoat stood in a dark doorway. He was watching Tom watching every move he made. Tom did not know what to do. He knocked once more on the glass door, again nothing happened. Finally, he picked up his suitcase. With a last look at the building, he turned and started walking back towards the Xeem Square. Tom Smith, he thought to himself as he walked, you need hot bath and a good sleep then you can decide what to do. The park hotel was expensive, but Tom remembered seeing one or two small hotels near Taksim Square. Finally, he was standing outside the Ankara Hotel. He went in. Good evening, he said to the woman at reception. I'd like a single room, please. The woman nodded. We have a nice room upstairs. Come, I'll show you. They went upstairs and she opened a door. Very nice room, she said. It was small, but it was clean and it looked comfortable. Teal take it, he said, and gave the woman his passport. The bathroom is along the corridor, she said. Breakfast is from 8 to 10 o'clock. Good night. Tom put his case down and sat on the bed. He suddenly felt very tired and unhappy. He was not having a good dinner in a nice restaurant. He was not sitting with the woman he loved. He was sitting alone in a cheap hotel in a strange city. For a long time he sat on the bed thinking, but I saw Angela. I saw her from the bus. Finally, he stood up. Okay, he thought. Tomorrow morning we'll go to Angela's office and find out what has happened. There's a very simple explanation, I'm sure. I will find out tomorrow. He had a hot bath and got into bed. He was very tired after his long journey and soon fell asleep. The man in the grey raincoat walked across the Xeem Square. There was a telephone kiosk in the corner. He dialed a number and waited. Then he spoke. He's in the Ankara Hotel, the man said. He waited at the Park Hotel and then he went to the girl's flat. Now he's in the Ankara Hotel. Yes, yes of course I will. He put down the phone and left the kiosk. The next morning, Tom felt much better. He had breakfast, then took a taxi to the office where Angela worked. The taxi drove through the busy streets and crossed the Galta Bridge into the old city. Finally, it turned into a small street near the railway station. It was a narrow street of shops, small businesses and workshops. The taxi stopped in front of a grey building. F. Karmia & Co. Export Import Agency, 
said the sign above the door. Tom pushed open the door and went in. A secretary was typing at the reception desk. She looked up as Tom came in. Good morning, she smiled. Good morning, said Tom. My name's Tom Smith. I'm looking for Angela Thompson, she's my fiancé. I arrived in Istanbul last night and waited for her, but she didn't. The secretary was staring at him. She stood up. Wait a moment, please, Mr. Smith. She hurried over to a door marked office and went inside. Tom could hear her talking to someone. The door opened and a man came out. He looked very serious. Mr. Smith, my name's Dinya. Please come in. Tom went into the office. Please sit down, Mr. Smith, said Dinya. Look here, I don't know how to tell you this, Mr. Smith. I have some very bad news for you. I'm very sorry indeed, but Miss Thompson, your fiancé, is, is dead. Chapter 4 I saw her. Drink this, Mr. Smith, said Mr. Dinya. He handed Tom a glass of strong brandy. Tom sat, shocked, white-faced, unable to speak. He drank the brandy slowly. How, how did it happen? He asked. A car accident. Miss Thompson was driving along a dangerous road. No one knows what happened. Her car went off the road and fell down the hillside. Yesterday evening, Tom asked, I beg your pardon? The accident, it happened yesterday evening? Dinya looked at him. Mr. Smith, the accident happened a week ago, last Sunday to be exact. She had been away to Bursa for the weekend end. But that's impossible, said Tom. I saw Angela yesterday. Yesterday? Yes. I was on the airport bus coming into Istanbul. I saw her in the street. TM terribly sorry, Mr. Smith, but you're making a mistake. No, I tell you I saw her. Mr. Smith, Dinya said patiently, Istanbul is a big city. There must be hundreds of women here who look like your fiancé. Tom said nothing. The British consulate were very helpful, continued Mr. Dinya. They made all the arrangements for the funeral. It was on Wednesday. Have her parents been told about this? Tom asked. That is a problem, I'm afraid. Her parents are on holiday in France. The British and French police are trying to contact them. So they don't know yet, said Tom quietly. No, they don't. I'm afraid. There was a long silence. Can I have another brandy, please? Asked Tom. Of course. Tom tried hard to think clearly. I thought I saw her yesterday, he said softly. I understand, Mr. Smith. It's a great shock, a terrible tragedy for you, for all of us. After a pause, Dinya asked, What will you do now, Mr. Smith? Is there anything I can do to help? I am not sure, said Tom. I need some time to think. I don't know what to do. Do you know anyone in Istanbul? Suddenly Tom remembered Kemal. Yes, yes, I have friends, don't worry. Look, Mr. Dinya, I can't decide anything now. I think we'll stay in Istanbul for a day or two. I'd like to visit the consulate and maybe the police. Mr. Dinya opened a drawer in his desk and took out a card. 
He wrote on it and handed the card to Tom. TV written down the telephone number of Mr. David Pennington. He is the man in the consulate who made the arrangements for the funeral. The other number is my office telephone number. Contact me if you need anything. I'm here during the day. Tom stood up. I must go now, he said. Thank you. You've been most kind. Mr. Dinya walked with him to the door. Well, Mr. Smith, once again, I'm terribly sorry. You know I was so sure I saw her. So sure. Tom said. I understand, replied Dinya. It's a terrible shock. The two men shook hands. Remember Come here any time if you need anything," said Mr. Dinya. "Goodbye now." "Goodbye," said Tom and walked out into the street. Mr. Dinya turned and walked back into his office. He closed the door carefully and sat down at his desk. For a few minutes he sat thinking. Then he picked up the telephone. Tom walked slowly through the crowded streets of old Istanbul. The streets were busy and full of interesting people, shops and cafes. But Tom did not see any of those things. He was not interested in Istanbul. He was not a tourist anymore. Tom was thinking of Angela. He remembered the journey on the bus from the airport. He was sure he had seen Angela. She had been there on the pavement getting out of a car. But Dinya said it was not Angela. Angela was dead. She had died a week ago. Tom walked through the streets of the city. He walked through the Grand Bazaar. He walked on and on through narrow old streets. He didn't know where he was. or what time it was he thought about angela he thought again about his journey on the bus from the airport again and again he thought about it and again and again he saw his fiance then he stopped walking and stood for a moment on the pavement he was standing on a street beside the sea angela isn't dead he thought I saw her. He looked in his pocket and found Kemal's telephone number. He walked quickly across the street to a cafe. He went inside to the telephone. "Hello, Kemal?" "Hello, it's me, Tom." "Remember?" "Yes, yes, fine, thanks." "Listen, remember you said I could phone you if I needed anything?" Well, something has happened. Can we meet 